absolutely text me all of your information and um I'll be looking for your letter of intent and I appreciate you. Perfect. Yeah. So one last thing before I let you go, I did just want to let you know, uh, we do these creative deals all the time. We stopped probably, I don't know, 50 auctions or something last year. So we deal with people that are in pre foreclosure and all of that type of stuff. So if you ever come across anything like that, that's kind of funky, like, Hey, I don't know. It's a lot of moving parts. That's what we specialize in oh, stuff that wow. everybody else. I wish I, okay. I'll definitely keep you in mind. There was a situation. Can you hear me? I don't know. If you don't know who I am by now, I don't know what you've been doing. You've been sleep. Let me wake you up with something straight up. Yeah. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Chris Monroe. R to the O E. I flip houses, rent cars, and make money. You know I'm not no motherfucker dummy. This how we do. Nice house too. It is a nice house. No question about that. They got her phone number right there. How you love that? Oh, I miss Joy. She looks so innocent on her picture. She might be somebody that might want to do a deal. I'm going to call her mobile number. It's a mobile and office. Oh, it's the same number. They trick me. How you going to put mobile and office and then act like it's separate and it's the same number? Come on, man. You can't make this up. Let's call Miss Joy since the other lady wouldn't answer. Joy. It's definitely cold calling. It's definitely a cold call when they don't know you're about to call. Joy. Let's go. Joy. 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 Hello. Hi, uh, Joy. Yes. This is Chris. Uh, I was calling in regards to a property you had listed on Greenway Chase. I was just calling to see if that property is still available. It is available. Great, great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Chris. Good, good. Yeah, so uh, what I'm looking for is some properties uh, that I could buy as far as investment. Uh, you think this property would be good for as an investment property? Well, um, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, the property is in, you know, really good shape. So I know for people who do invest, uh, it's not typically uh, an investment property that people would pick up because she's uh, done. You, you wouldn't have to do anything, really. <laughs> Oh, okay. Was this like so a in that aspect of it? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Now, was this like a flip property or something? Or no, she lived in it. Oh, okay. she just moved to a place that was larger. As a matter of fact, in the basement of uh, the property, because it's a partially finished basement. And uh, have you been in there already? I have not been in this one. I just saw it online. I said, man, that looks okay. like a nice house. We just finished another house in Florissant. So I was just looking for another one. Another oh, couple okay. Ones to buy. Okay. You know, there's uh, in the basement, you'll actually see that they started another um, bedroom suite down there with um, um, they roughed in a walk in closet, the bedroom and bathroom and then just decided you know what this just isn't enough space for us anymore mm. so they moved okay uh they moved to a house that, that was like almost four thousand square feet so yeah no it wasn't a flip property okay they just could not expand anymore there for their family it does look really good i was like wow it looked like somebody almost just fixed it up or something yeah no she um just kept really she um took really good care of the home she really did okay because um she I cut down all the trees um and everything too so it looks like it's been on for quite a while do you know why it hasn't sold yet you know what i have no idea <laughs> honestly Wow. and we did have an open house because we have had um interest but um 
you know, no one has uh, committed. Yeah. Well, that definitely happens. Um, so, I mean, at, with us being invested. But it wasn't due to any inspections or anything like that. Yeah, so that's typically when we buy these houses, we usually pay cash and make it, you know, an easy trans transaction. I mean, a lot of times we don't pay top, top dollar, just to be honest with, with you. And you probably know that already. I mean, have anybody presented her with the offer that she said, well, that's way too low or something like that? or Not a cash offer. No, not a cash offer yet. But, you know, certainly, you know, um, put it in writing. Um Send it to me and I'll, I'll certainly present it to her. Okay, perfect. I mean, just looking at it, I mean, I'm thinking we're probably, you know, closer to around 180,000 mark. Uh, what do you think about something like that? I know, I I don't believe she will. You, actually, say you don't think she's going to yeah, no. um, clean that way? But put, again, put it in writing. I have to present whatever you submit, I have to present it to her. That makes perfect sense. So uh, we do buy houses cash like that, uh, but there is another way where we can get closer to the purchase price. Uh, what we do, we would buy the house, uh, probably closer to that two fifty four you have on there. Um, but we would structure something more creative. Have you done deals like that before? Where it's like um, taking over payments or direct to seller, seller finance things like that. Um. I haven't personally lost my purse. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm walking a kid in school. <laughs> um, I have not personally, but yes, absolutely. I have certainly um, heard of um, owner financing or um, I, I have heard of that. Now, I know that um, her loan, I don't believe it, it is not assumable. Okay. Her, her loan on the place, um, I don't believe it is. Um, I don't believe it is assumable, but I um, do know she wants to sell it. Okay. Well, I mean, because uh, that's the thing too. We wouldn't be looking to actually assume the loan. Uh, it's something else we could do. That's a creative okay. strategy as well. It's called subject to the existing financing. Um, and I can get you all of this in writing just to show you exactly how it works and everything. And uh, basically. The only thing we would have to figure out is all the details as far as, you know, what loan we would be taking over, things like that. We can buy it in a safe way where you would actually still get your real estate commission. She still get the house sold and not have to make payments on a vacant house. Because I know nobody really wants to do that. What do you think she would say to something like that? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Put it in writing and I would uh, absolutely send it to her. Okay, perfect. Is there anything else about this house that I need to know as far as condition or, or anything else like that? Um, um, actually, no, I would say no. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, the only thing, I'm sorry, hold one no, moment. Take your time. No rush. Okay, thank you. Hi, good morning. How are you? Okay, you have to do. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. You too. Hi, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no problem. I know I called you out of nowhere, and I know you're dealing with other things in life, so. Oh, no, no problem. I have to drop a child off for a friend. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, the only thing that I would say, and I asked her about it myself, in the basement, there um, is a, and you'll see it, and I'm sure since you do properties, you know when you're looking at something problematic and it's not problematic but um there is a crack on the wall and she actually doesn't know where or how it happened because it was a problem that she inherited well i won't say a problem because she said 
nothing ever happened. She said it didn't leak, it didn't do anything. They never had any problems with it, but that was one um, thing that um, she was kind of hesitant about. So I'm thinking before she purchased it. Um, but so I'm thinking that maybe if she was hesitant, maybe other people looking at it may be hesitant as well. But um, nothing, uh, nothing happened. And you'll see um, the one I'm talking about. Nothing happened. Um, no leaks. She said she didn't have any problems out of it. So she actually was glad she, you know, went ahead with the purchase. Yeah, and so she actually it, loves, she really loves the home. Is it a horizontal or a vertical crack? Do you know? Um, yes, it is vertical. Okay. Yeah, so either way. And they, you can tell it was repaired. Yeah. So it, either way, it doesn't matter. We would take the it's house in as is condition. So like I said, we just try to make it an easy transaction for you and your client. And we just try to make it smooth and make everybody happy at the end. That's my main goal. I get it. So yeah, um, you know, put um, <clears throat> put it in, uh, you know, put it in writing. I present it to her. Um, now I uh, know absolutely that like one eighty won't fly. <laughs> yeah, I figured that. I just thought to let you know where we're at, probably. <laughs> Because that's probably uh, so, lower than what she's yeah, probably going to. Yeah, I mean, but, but present it, and she can always, you know, turn it down. I have to present her everything, so. Makes perfect sense. So I guess that 180 is below what she owes on it, I guess. Is that what you're saying, Joy? No, that is not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I'm just saying that 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 is um, I know that would be unacceptable. <laughs> to her. Yeah, makes perfect sense. So the what? I'm, yeah. So <laughs> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to text you uh, right after this call with all my contact information. If you can just reply back with your email address, I'll get that over to you today. A LOI letter of intent. You can you get an outline of you know what we can do as far as a cash offer and uh, structuring a creative offer. And once you look that over, and if it's something she's interested in, we would have to hop on another call to work out the details, just to make sure we, you know, answer all of her questions. Because I'm sure there will be a lot of questions uh, as far as that uh, is a creative deal. And I want to make sure you look like a superstar in this whole deal. And you found Chris, and I came, and we both got her to the finish line. How does that sound? Okay, well, um, that sounds great, Chris. Let's see. Let's see uh, how it goes. Let's see what happens. I do, you know, I want the best for my clients, so. That's right. Do you have any other uh, properties that uh, maybe are listed or not listed yet that may fall into something of this creative realm as well? Um, you know, I do have a listing, um, possibly the appointment is tomorrow. So let me just see what that is like. And I can, you know, certainly let you know what that, um, um, you know, what, what that would entail. Um, this one, that one is an inherited property and it may not be in as good a condition. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. So, but that appointment isn't until tomorrow. Look at you, Joy. You're out here getting it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can let let you know once I. Um, perfect. Perfect. Once I see what that one's all about. But yeah, uh, absolutely. Text me all of your information, and um, I'll be looking for your letter of intent. And I appreciate you. Perfect. Yeah. So one last thing before I let you go, I did just want to let you know, uh, we do these creative deals all the time. We stopped probably, I don't know, 50 auctions or something last year. So we deal with people that are in pre foreclosure and all of that type of stuff. So if you ever come across anything like that, that's kind of funky, like, Hey, I don't know. It's a lot of moving parts. That's what we specialize in oh, stuff that wow. everybody else. I wish I, okay. I'll definitely keep you in mind. There was a situation I'll check that situation out. Yeah. Um, 
there was a situation and she did take it off the market. Um, but I'll check that out. Yeah. Another client that I had. Yeah. Okay. And, and we make sure you get paid in every transaction as well. So we do all I'll the heavy lifting and stuff. So. Yeah, I did just want to let you know that. Other than that, okay. any other questions for me before I let you go? Uh, no, no other questions. Um, yeah, just to include everything in, uh, if you can, please, in the text message. Um, you know, um, first, last name, phone number, your email address as well. And if I, um, that way, if I need to um, contact you, uh, I have a way to do so. 100%, because I don't want to just do one deal with you, Joy. I want to do about 10 of them this year. Can we do that? <laughs> okay. All right. I, absolutely. <laughs> All right. You have a good day, and I'll, I'll be waiting to get your uh, email back, and I'll get that over to you today, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, goodbye. Now, where are these people be at all my life? I be looking for these kind of agents that are open. They're not like, oh, we can't do that. That's illegal. Oh. That are just open to listening, at least. Because this is how you create what's called a unicorn agent. Unicorn. She's not like the rest. She's open. May not know all the details. May not be a know-it-all. But they're even open to presenting it. One, because some agents won't even present your offer. Two, may be able to work us out more than just this one deal. I like to plant those seeds. I'm not looking to just do one deal with her. Like I said, we want to do 10 of them this year if we can. So what do y'all think about that? What do you think about that call? Say great call, Chris. She was in the middle of a few things and that was awesome. That's right. I don't mind her being in the middle of things, but I want to get the, the ball rolling. I want to buy houses from her. She's finding deals because remember, what do people do when they want to sell their house? Generally, most people do one main thing. They go and get a real estate agent. Now, that real estate agent may know to throw it on the MLS, take pictures, etc. But they may not know anything about creative real estate like I do. I took the time to educate myself. Thank you, Shelly. I took the time to educate myself to understand different options because we can give her a low ball cash offer, which I am going to give her that low ball cash offer of 180. I am serious about that, even though I know they won't take it, but that'll make my creative offer look that much better. And remember, this property's been on the market for over 110 days and she's making a payment on a house. This is exactly what we've been looking for. And how much money did that cost me? Zero dollars. Show up and win, baby. That's all we doing. I need a team of agents like her bringing me properties where I don't even have to market no more. I'm just sitting back. Hey, yeah. Hey, Joey. Hey, Billy. Hey, whoever. Some other person that comes in and has a problem. And you see how when I planted the seed to that agent, she started saying, oh, wow. Yeah, I do have another client that was in foreclosure. Oh, wow. I do have another client that had a listing on market and did this and the other. I want to plant the seed that I'm a solution to the problems. Bring me your real estate problems. Now, that's our first call. But as we go on through our new friendship, relationship, business, whatever you want to call it, I want to be able to be a trusted resource for her. And guess what that gets me? Leads that I didn't even have to pay for opportunities that I didn't have to even go market and go spend a bunch of money and do a bunch of cold calling. They're bringing the deals to me at this point. If you can get 10 people like her bringing you deals, what would your marketing budget look like then? You're no longer marketing for deals. They're being brought to you for free. Yeah. And they're making payment on a vacant house. They're making payments, monthly payments each and every month on a vacant house. Matter of fact, let me look up something right quick. Let me see what their payment is. Let's cheat. Let's cheat real quick. Even though I don't know this information yet, like how much her payment, her loan amount, everything, I can pull it up. I can figure it out approximately. Let me see here. Uh-oh, maybe I can't. They won't let me get it. Did I put in the wrong address? What the heck? Maybe I can't. They don't want me to uh, get it. I thought I was going to get the address and pull it up, but the system is doing something weird. Let me make sure it's got me logged in. But zero money out of pocket. Zero. And then they should take the offer. But I don't even know what my offer is going to be. 
that's the crazy thing about it. I don't. I didn't go into this opportunity to, thinking of what I'm going to give them, how I'm going to flip it, how I'm going to Airbnb it. All that stuff is not even important right now. I just need a seller with a real estate problem that want to work with me. That's all I need. Everything else we figure out. No reason to try to jump the gun and oh, I'm going to move into this house and this is perfect for me because now you're becoming what's called a motivated buyer. I don't want to be a motivated buyer. So, yeah, it's overpriced for sure because on here it's saying the value is $199. They got it up for $254. But, you know, whatever. Oh, wow. Woo! Woo! Can I tell you what the payment is on this house? Well, let's start right here. The original loan amount back in 2015. They bought this house in 2015. So, what's that? Nine years ago. Bought it back about nine years ago. Estimated loan payment four hundred ninety five dollars. I love to take that payment over four ninety five plus taxes and insurance, but still probably eight hundred a month when we get through with taxes, insurance, and the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance all together. That's crazy. Can I take that payment over? Who knows? Can I take it over? It'd be great. This is kind of deals we're looking for. Original loan amount eighty two thousand. Right now, I look like their estimated loan balance is a hundred. Or I'm sorry, is seventy one thousand. So think about this: that one eighty that I said I wanted to offer, they could accept that offer. They have the equity to do that. They could just say, you know what, I'm tired of dealing with this house. One eighty seller. So when that agent said, no, nah, she won't want that, I'm presenting it anyway. I let them tell me no, that won't work. But I do want to know more about that creative offer. Matter of fact, my 180 might go down to 160 now just to make sure they don't want it. Because if they do take the cash offer on a so-called $200,000 house, matter of fact, that's what I need to find out. What is the ARV of this property? They're saying 200 on this software. Different software show different things. But once I figure out what the after repair value is of this property, I can figure out what my cash offer is. It's probably going to be about... 70% uh, less than whatever the ARV is minus repairs. ARV after repair value minus 70% minus repairs. That's our cash offer. But it doesn't look like the house needs any repairs. So that's where we're at. Give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share. If you care. So I want to get into real estate but don't know where to start. Well, what I would say is to join the Future Cash Flow Club. It's a community of investors where we talk about wholesaling, we talk about creative deal structuring, buying houses subject to, all of the creative stuff that everybody's talking about. You don't need a real estate license or any of that. Wow, where do I sign up? Well, I would say go to futurecashflowclub.com. That's futurecashflowclub.com. You can even get a free trial. Try it out today.